The power connector is getting a little janky on my FT891. I think now would be a good time to replace it, so let's get started. There's a lot of things that I love about my Yaesu FT891. Unfortunately, the power connector isn't one of them. Yaesu uses a four pin Molex connector on the back of the rig. And while that in itself isn't a bad thing, if you use the radio portable for any length of time, this will happen. The connector loosens up and becomes a pain in the butt. Well, a few months back, Jason Wang N0BOI came up with a great little mod to convert the Molex connector on the FT891 over to a more friendly Anderson power pole connector. Power poles have become a standard in amateur radio emergency communications, and while I use power poles on almost all of my batteries and power supplies, I just neglected to make the conversion on the rig itself. Fast forward to today, and Jason just released an upgraded design to the power pole adapter. He strengthened a weak point on the back plane, so it should be even more robust. With the announcement of this upgraded piece, I thought now is the perfect time to upgrade my FT891. If you have access to a 3D printer, you can make the pieces yourself. The STL files are freely available on Thingiverse. Or you can purchase a kit with just the parts directly from Jason. I'll put links to the files and the kits in the video description below. Before we begin, please be aware that modifying your radio may void the warranty. Mine's long past that point. So let's get started in printing the plastic pieces and converting my FT891 over to an Anderson power pole connector. Now that I have the parts printed, let's assemble the rest of the items we'll need for the power pole modification. If you didn't purchase the kit, you will need one set of Anderson power poles with the 30 amp or 14 to 16 gauge wire inserts, two number eight crimp on ring terminals for 14 to 16 gauge wire, a 45 millimeter or 1.8 inch length of two conductor wire. I'm using some 14 gauge silicon that I had on hand, but 16 gauge will work fine. And finally, an M3 by 12 millimeter bolt and nut. Mine has the hex socket head. For tools, other than a wire cutter and stripper and the power pole crimper, I'm using the iFixit Mako 64 piece precision screwdriver set. This is essential if you want to do repairs without buggering up those little screw heads. Remove the bottom cover of the FT891. There are four small screws on the bottom and two on each side. The cover will lift off. Locate the power connector, unscrew the leads from the board, and remove it. Next, assemble the new connector. Take 45 millimeters or 1.8 inches of wire and strip off a small portion on each end, about 5 millimeters or 1 quarter inch. Crimp a power pole insert on one end and crimp the ring terminal on the other. Insert the power pole insert into the shells, making sure that the black wire goes into the black shell and the red wire into the red shell. Mate the two pieces together, remembering the phrase, red right, tip top. Hey, we're halfway done. I'm just going to jump in and say that if you found this video interesting and want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe. That's my indicator to produce more of these types of videos. Thank you for your support. Next, take the printed parts and insert the power poles into the inside piece, taking care that the screw opening is at the top of our working position. Now for the hard part, but it's really not that hard. See the little cutout on the side of the power pole? The edge of the radio's chassis needs to go in there so that the whole assembly is held into place by the radio's chassis. It'll take a bit of dexterity, but when done, the whole thing should look kind of like this. After that, the outside piece will just fit into place. Screw the two pieces together with the bolt. There's a little spot in the back for the nut to sit to hold it all together. Finally, screw the ring terminals back onto the board. 
The board is marked red for the positive lead and black for the negative. Don't over tighten it. Do an inspection to make sure everything is hooked up correctly and that there are no loose connections or stray wires. If all is good, replace the bottom cover. The project is complete. You can now hook up a battery or power supply and power up your rig. The whole project should take about 20 minutes, but if it takes longer, that's okay. It's not really a race. So what do you think? Does this conversion look easy? If you don't have a 3D printer, you can order the parts directly from Jason. There's a link in the video description. The conversion looks nice and it wasn't too difficult. I'll check in later on how it holds up in the long term. But that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.